This is Mike Grell, and you're listening to Warlord Worlds. Welcome back, and thank you for listening to Warlord Worlds, a fan podcast devoted to the comic creations of writer and artist Mike Grill, including the Warlord, John Sable, and Green Arrow. I'm Ruth. And I'm Darren. And this is a fan podcast. We're not affiliated with Mike Grill, and the opinions expressed are just ours. We do this podcast simply because we enjoy reading and talking about the comics of Mike Grill. Today, we're talking about the Green Arrow Super Spectacular, celebrating the 80th anniversary of the Emerald Archer. This 100-page special was released this summer by DC Comics and features multiple covers and multiple stories, including a brand new story written and illustrated by Mike Grell. If you're a fan, please check out MikeGrell.com. That's his official site where you'll find all the latest news, including convention appearances. And Mike does have a few shows on his schedule, including Biloxi, Mississippi and Dallas, Texas, as well as GalaxyCon here in Raleigh, which is very exciting news for us. As always, pre-orders for convention sketches may be placed through Scott Kress at CatskillComics.com. And if you can't make it to a convention but would like to get an original drawing, then Scott Kress can help you with that as well. Just make your request at CatskillComics.com. Scott's a terrific gentleman, and we've really enjoyed getting to know him over the years. In addition to Mike, Scott handles commission requests for several other comic professionals, including Ramona Fraden, Bob Hall, Ron Friends, Ron Wagner, and many more. Other great places to keep up with the latest news about Mike Rell's projects are at the official Masterstroke Studios Mike Rell Universe page on Facebook and on Twitter at Grell Official. And of course, the Mike Grell page on Facebook is a wonderful way to stay current on Mike Grell's projects. Longtime fans Gus Ceballos and Jeff Messer do a great job with that site. And speaking of the latest news, Mike Grell recently gave fans a sneak peek at the cover for Green Arrow, The Longbow Hunter's Saga, Omnibus Volume 2. Here's what Mike said about the cover. Since this volume includes Mark Ryan's time travel story set in the time of Robin Hood, I designed the theme around the Tree of Life and the Chalice Well cover at Glastonbury. It worked out perfectly, leaving an oval shape where the circles intersect, which was the perfect spot for a portrait vignette on the spine. This volume will contain nearly 1,500 pages, and it's available for pre-order now with a release date of November 9, 2021. And that release date made us happy because it's the anniversary of our very first date. We're sure many of you picked up the first volume, and this second volume will make a great companion to celebrate Mike's time on that wonderful book. We enjoy giving shout-outs to our friends and sharing listener feedback, so please feel free to write us anytime and join in on the conversations. We'd love to hear your thoughts about any of Mike Grell's titles. We'll provide our email address and other ways to reach us at the end of the episode. Warlord Worlds is part of the Rad Adventures Podcast Network. If you enjoy the show, please consider checking out our other podcasts that are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and YouTube. Xenozoic Xenophiles covers the post-apocalyptic adventure series Xenozoic Tales, featuring Cadillacs and Dinosaurs by writer and artist Mark Schultz. And Trekker Talk is devoted to the adventures of 23rd century bounty hunter Mercy St. Clair from the pages of the sci-fi comic Trekker by writer and artist Ron Randall. Mike Grell, Mark Schultz, and Ron Randall are our favorite comic creators. Their stories are always filled with adventure and interesting characters, and their art is excellent. We hope you'll try out our other shows, and we'll be sure to include links to those podcasts in our show notes. But now it's time to talk about the Green Arrow's 80th anniversary, right after this promo for another podcast you might enjoy. Adolescents this generation have no respect and are a far cry from my sweet Jane Eyre and her friend Helen Burns. Why, just this afternoon I was Stella. walking across and, and you know what? Men too. Well, uh, 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 Stella? Men 
someone like the tragic Mr. Rochester and teachers, pa, they're all like the villainous Mr. Brocklehurst. Hey, Stella! Uh, yes, Thomas? As much as I enjoy, um, indulging your insanity, uh, we have a promo to record. Oh dear, and what might that be? That is you and I telling everyone that we have a brand new podcast out there. It's called Required Reading with Tom and Stella. Once a month, we will take a look at a single work of literature, discuss it, analyze it, and determine if it's worth its place in the canon. Oh dear, that sounds delightful. Oh, I'm sure it will be. And you can find us on the Two True Freaks Network, which is at twotruefreaks.com. Oh yes, Required Reading with with Tom and... Why is it Tom and Stella? Why can't it be Stella and Tom? It rolls off the tongue better? Okay. Well, that was easy. So, Required Reading with Tom and Stella at twotruefreaks.com. Thanks for contributing to the promo there. You did a great job. Oh, you are so welcome. Our podcast is all about celebrating the work of Mike Grell. And while Mike didn't create Green Arrow, he did reinvent many aspects of the character that define how the character is seen today. Green Arrow was originally created by Mort Weisinger and George Papp in 1941. It was a good year for Mort Weisinger because during that same year he created Aquaman along with Paul Norris. And the first appearances of both Green Arrow and Aquaman were in More Fun Comics number 73 in November 1941. Of course, many aspects of the character hark back to Robin Hood, and since we're fans of Robin Hood stories, that also contributes to Green Arrow being one of our favorite superheroes. And that's the same for Mike Grell as well. The character was moderately successful early on, but never had his own solo title during those early decades. Then a new generation of readers in the late 1960s and early 1970s saw Green Arrow given a dramatic redesign by Neil Adams, and the character was essentially reinvented by writer Denny O'Neill, who made him a defender of the underprivileged. O'Neill also introduced a romance between Green Arrow and Black Canary that has continued since then. And then later in the 1970s, Denny O'Neill continued to write Green Arrow, with Mike Grell taking over as artist. Mike Grell left DC during the early and mid-1980s to work on his own creator-owned titles, including the sci-fi series Star Slayer and the hugely popular John Sable Freelance. However, DC wanted Mike back and offered him any title he wanted to return, and Mike chose Green Arrow. Mike reinvented and redesigned the character once again, and while he was still an advocate for the underprivileged, he was also more of an urban hunter who worked in the shadows in a much more gritty and realistic comic. That all started with the miniseries The Longbow Hunters in 1987, which was so successful that it led to the first ongoing comic series for the Emerald Archer. Mike would go on to work on the series through 1993. He wrote the first 80 issues of the series, along with multiple miniseries along the way. And while Mike didn't draw the ongoing series regularly, he frequently drew the covers and occasionally provided the art for special issues and some of the miniseries. Many aspects of Mike Grell's version of Green Arrow have stayed with the character ever since, and large parts of his version of the character are featured in the long-running Arrow TV series, including the hooded costume that Mike gave him. Mike's work was so influential to the TV series that he gets a shout-out in the series through a character named Judge Grell, and Mike also drew the wanted poster that was used during the show's first season, and the character of Shadow that Mike created in the comics does appear in a few episodes of the series. And now, here we are at the 80th anniversary of Green Arrow, and DC has released a super spectacular to celebrate. The 100-page oversized issue features 12 different stories featuring many of the significant characters that have appeared in the series over the decades, including Black Canary, Connor Hawk, Speedy, Count Vertigo, and more. And these stories are told by some of the key comic creators who have worked on the series over the years, including Mike Grell. DC tapped into the skills of known veterans as well as new talent to make it all spectacular. The special features a main cover by Dan Mora, and there are also eight different variant covers representing each decade from the 1940s through the 2010s. It's a beautiful book, and while we're only going to be covering the Mike Grell story, we highly recommend the issue for any Green Arrow fan. It's definitely worth reading and being part of any comic fan's collection. 
And while we aren't covering it here, we have to give an enthusiastic recommendation for the story Tap, Tap, Tap. It's a moving story from Denny O'Neill's son, Larry O'Neill. It's a really beautiful and touching tribute, and we love it. But for now, let's talk about Mike's story in the book. Green Arrow 80th Anniversary Super Spectacular. Just the usual sort of stuff. Written and illustrated by Mike Grell. Colors by Lovern Kondierski. Letters by Travis Lanham. Our story opens at Sherwood Florist in Seattle. It's night, and the Green Arrow is returning home. He walks up the stairs past the gorgeous painting of Robin Hood to find Dinah sleeping. But she wakes when he enters the room and asks about his evening. Oliver's memory goes back to earlier than that evening. He's at the docks, investigating a shipment of smuggled guns rumored to be arriving that are earmarked for anti-government militias. And he's surprised to run into Shadow, who says she's there for the same reason. She's followed a lead about smuggled guns being shipped from Russia through North Korea, but she's heard the guns are intended for a different group of customers. The two are soon unleashing a barrage of arrows as the smugglers begin unloading a large container from a docked ship. As the battle continues, the two confident archers have a philosophical discussion about who is more to blame, the traffickers or the consumers, and whether the penalties are sufficient to defer the risk. However, while the two may not agree on everything, they do agree that they both fight for what they know is right. One of the smugglers begins climbing a ladder up to one of the cranes in hopes of cutting off our heroes. Oliver takes out the last of the men on the dock as Shadow unleashes an arrow taking out the man who has reached the controls for the crane. The two heroes stand watch as the police arrive and open the container. But instead of weapons inside, the container is filled with people. So instead of gun running, they've uncovered a human trafficking ring and helped rescue many people that night. And then, in the final panel, we are told, definitely not the end. This short eight-page story so clearly shows why we love Mike Grail's Green Arrow. For those who haven't read Mike's run recently, we get little Easter eggs to remind us of so much. From the Seattle Space Needle, to the outside of Sherwood Florist, to the painting of Robin Hood on the wall, and even Black Canary's wig on the table in the bedroom, which suggests Dinah might have been out on an adventure earlier in the evening and just returned home before Oliver. We then get an adventure with Green Arrow and Shadow, and the two even have a conversation to remind readers of the principles held by our heroes. The story is fast-paced and shows off the skills of our characters and leaves us wanting more. It's perfect. And then there's the art, and oh my goodness, is it a gorgeous eight pages. Every single panel is glorious. The layouts are varied and make every page look different. The characters are dynamic. The use of shadows and light sets the mood. It's just wonderful to have Mike Grell drawing Green Arrow again. That said, it's tough to choose our favorite art. But despite how gorgeous the pages are, there are a few images that still stand out above the others. The entire first page is perfect. We've already mentioned all of the callbacks to Mike's run, but still, seeing Sherwood Flores, the Robin Hood painting, Oliver and Dinah, all again and all on one page, just makes that page a treasure. And the other we have to mention is the double page spread near the end, where we see Green Arrow and Shadow each fire their final arrows. The images of our two heroes are excellent, and I love the cloud-covered moon in the background. Mike Grell accomplished so much in only eight pages, and despite all of those wonderful things we've already said, the best thing about the issue is the final panel that says, definitely not the end, which leaves us filled with hope for more Green Arrow from Mike Grell. Next up is listener feedback, where we share emails and other messages we've received since last time. We certainly appreciate every comment and want to thank everyone who wrote in or got in touch to share their thoughts. Before we get into our feedback, we want to mention that our friend Martin Gray posted a full review of the entire 80th anniversary special at his blog, Too Dangerous for a Girl. You've heard Martin on our show before talking about the Legion of Superheroes, and we'll be sure to include a link to his post in our show notes. And while you're reading his review on this special, we encourage you to browse around his site while you're there. His site is filled with lots of interesting and entertaining articles. 
Here are a few comments he had about this story and collection. I never followed the series, but I can appreciate Grail's craft, and his brilliant talent is on display here as Green Arrow teams up with the Assassin's Shadow to end a people smuggling operation. While I didn't love every story, that was always unlikely in a hundred page grab bag. I do love that DC has offered Green Arrow fans a comic stuffed to the brim with nods to his entire history by creators who care about the Emerald Archer as much as we do. Another comment we saw about the special was from Mike Rhodes over at the Mike Grell page on Facebook. His favorite part of Mike's story was exactly the same as ours, that not the end closing on the last page. And now moving into feedback from the last episode. Professor Allen let us know he was excited to hear our last podcast and wrote to say, excellent episode. Mark, a.k.a. Green Lantern HG, wrote, another great episode, guys. Love hearing about Mike Grell and Maggie's adventures. They seem to be getting more exciting. I'm starting to have a crush on Maggie, but I'm sure she wouldn't give me the time of day. Aw, I think you're underestimating yourself there, Mark. Jerry Green of the Professor Frenzy Show got in touch to let us know how much he enjoyed the last episode. And our friend John Baker sent some compliments our way, saying, Another fine and informative episode by the Batman and Robin of Joyful Podcasting. Always learn interesting tidbits that delight me when you two are mic side. Well done, Cape Crusaders. Thank you, John. So glad you enjoy listening. And as a follow-up on an earlier episode, Luke Giaconetti wrote to us about episode 22 where we covered issues of The Warlord, John Sable, and Green Arrow, saying, just listen to this episode. I guess I forgot to download it when it was first published. Really enjoyed the three adventures this time. All sounded like page-turners. Thanks, as always, for your enthusiasm and thoughtful opinions on these comics. Thank you, Luke. And this is the perfect time to encourage listeners to write in about any of our episodes. One of the many great things about podcasts are they're there and waiting whenever it's convenient for the listener. So if you've recently heard an older episode and want to say something about it, please write in. We'd love to hear your comments. Next, we want to extend our thanks to everyone who supported us on social media. These are people who promoted our last episode and shared comments. If we miss a name, let us know and we'll include it next time. And please do forgive us if we mispronounce your name. If that happens, please let us know and we'd be happy to correct it next time as well. Al Sedano of Resurrections, and Adam Warlock and Thanos podcast. Alan Wright from BoldOutlaw.com. Austin Appleby. Bill Beer of the Too Old Too New podcast and the Bat Pod. Brian Mulvey. Chris at BTO and Bat Books of the Professor Frenzy Show. Chris Mounts. Clinton Robson of Coffee and Comics. Comics in the Golden Age. Creator Talks with Christopher Calloway. Daniel Durand. Derek William Crabb of the Van Holes Podcast and History of Comics on Film. Dr. G, Man of Nerdology of the Pulp to Pixel Podcast. Ed and Terry Moore of Teal Productions. Fabio Boco, Jerry Green of the Professor Frenzy Show. Green Lantern HG, a.k.a. Hal Jordan. Jared Albrecht, the Yard Cell Artist. Jeff and Rick Presents, Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Jeff Messer of the Mike Grell Page and Issues With. Jeffrey Sargent. Jeremy Gunter. John Baker, who does TV sci-fi reviews at 3 If By Space and Beyond the Rim. Justice Trek. Artist Ken Solo. Kirk Spencer. Lori Sutton, former DC editor and writer of You Choose Adventure Books. Liz Ann Oswalt. The Lombox Crusade with Pat, Jared, Jason, and Delvin. Louis Albareca. Luke Giaconetti of the Earth Destruction Directive. Mark Rhodes. Awesome actor Mark Ryan, who works on The Pilgrim with Mike Grell. Paul Hicks of Waiting for Doom and the DCOCD podcast. Professor Allen of the Relatively Geeky podcast. Randy Andrews, the sci-fi guy of Soundtrack Alley. Steve Bridge. Talk nerdy to me. Vic Sage of Pop Culture Retorama. And Warren Montgomery of Will Lil Comics. Thank you again, everyone, and we'll be right back after this promo for another podcast you might enjoy. Hey you! Yeah, you listening to this. My name is Mercy St. Clair, and I'm a trekker. Not a very glamorous job, but not according to some group called the Akadek Gonagon Theatre Works. And me! I think your adventures can be very glamorous. Oh, come off it, Molly. What I do is dirty, dangerous, and frustrating. Maybe. But I know I like hearing about what you do. 
And now other people can as well. That's where you come in. Yes, you. The one I started talking to before being interrupted. Head on over to 8TW.Ninja and look for my adventures as dramatized by the Akadekagonagon Theater Works and some guy named Ron Randall. Or else. Mercy! Ron Randall's Trekker, a new audio drama by the Akadekagonagon Theater Works, presented through the Two True Freaks Podcast Network. Coming summer 2021. Before we go, we want to provide our contact information. If you want to contact us directly or have something you would like to have read on the show, please send an email to warlordworlds at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the name Warlord Worlds. And you can listen to our show through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts, and all of our Mike Grail-themed episodes are always available at warlordworlds.com. You can also find the show on YouTube as part of the Rad Adventures Network. That's Rad, R-A-D, which is short for Ruth and Darren. And on the Rad Adventures YouTube channel and at radadventuresnetwork.com, you'll find all of the episodes of all of our podcasts, including Warlord Worlds, as well as Trekker Talk about 23rd Century Bounty Hunter Mercy St. Clair by Ron Randall, and Xenozoic Xenophiles about the Cadillacs and Dinosaurs series Xenozoic Tales by Mark Schultz. If you like the show, please consider leaving a review. Every review helps the podcast be more likely to show up in search results. And on YouTube, we hope you'll subscribe to the channel and give us some likes on the videos. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll come back next time for another new episode of Warlord Worlds. Warlord Worlds is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. For more information, visit comicspodcast.com. We are not affiliated with DC Comics or Mike Grell. The views expressed on the show are solely ours. Music is taken from the album Royalty-Free Instrumental Music for Movies and Websites. We make no money from this podcast and no copyright infringement is intended. Mm